you said something earlier I wanted to revisit. You talked about you know coronavirus and and avoiding getting sick versus avoiding coronavirus. And I, I've seen a, a few people out there, like the New York Post was just going after some guy who was like, maybe you should do higher dose vitamin C. And I'm like, you know what? Higher dose vitamin C, in, in, it increases resilience in humans. And the whole point is, maybe you could be exposed less. Maybe if you are exposed to not get it, and if you do get it, to not have any symptoms. And like, there's your pathway for being okay through coronavirus, which is what's gonna happen to probably 90, 95% of people. Uh, and then some 5% are going to get pneumonia and some of those are not going to make it, right? That's kind of what's going on. So you're, uh, uh, you're an experienced person here. What you said about thymosin makes sense. Thymic protein A, which is a thymus, a thymus gland protein that you can take under the tongue, has been for 30 years recommended by doctors. If you start getting sick, take this and you don't get sick. Uh, and it does help. So basically we know resilience, not treating corona. What are the other big resilience things that would be on your list if you were gonna go travel in a region where coronavirus is floating around, knowing it might not cure, treat, or prevent, but just to add up to your resilience, what would you do? Um, in the peptide world or just in general? Well, let's start with peptides, peptides and anything else you do as well. I would, I would definitely, there's a few things I would take with me. It, it's part of my travel kit. And especially if you're going to an area where you're, you're going to be potentially encountering something like that. Um, Argentin 23 or colloidal silver is one of them. Um, that always travels with me if I'm going someplace. And I, I would even recommend taking colloidal silver, um, not just waiting until you get sick. Go ahead and, and, and take it one to two times a day. Some people take it more than that. Thymus just health, orally? Just orally, yep. Um, okay. And the, under the tongue, let it... Let it I, I use it in a nasal spray. Yeah, the nasal spray works as well. Maybe you'd use both. Um, yeah. I like the idea of the nasal gel because it kind of, you know, maybe traps things, maybe not. But if it can trap it's something and stay in contact with your mucous membranes longer, then that's kind of nice. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm big Argentin. I've seen incredible turnarounds with Argentin, and I like to travel with it. Um, thymus and alpha, for sure, um, and BPC-157. BPC is such a great modulator. It's just one of those wonderful things. Out of out of the peptides, I would I would be definitely doing that. Um, off the top of my head, those those are probably my my biggest ones. And of course, taking all of your supplements that you're supposed to be taking. You don't want to get nutrient depleted when you're trying to not get sick. Yeah. I think like vitamin D and zinc and, and things like that, that are good for everything. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably also look at andrographis, uh, which is a, an herb and there's formulations of echinacea and andrographis that are clinically studied to reduce upper respiratory infections, your likelihood of getting them, the duration and severity. And Look, it may not do anything, but the odds are that it probably will reduce severity given what we have. And no drug and no herb has been tested against every variant of every type of virus out there um, because that's not how they do it. <laughs> so yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh, it, you're basically, on one hand, rolling rolling the dice a little bit, but bottom line is you're rolling dice every day of your life. So did you tilt the odds in your favor? Can you use loaded dice? And the things you just talked about, those are going to help you load the dice so that you win more often than not. And that's kind of the game, right? There is another peptide that I, I, I don't automatically think about because it's so powerful and it can Herxheimer people. Um, mm -hmm. LL37. LL37 is an anti-infective peptide. It has antimicrobial activity. And um, it... It can really start, if, if people have a bio burden that they were unaware of, it can start killing things off and they can feel pretty sick. Yeah, like Lyme disease or Bartonella um, yes. or Borrelia or something. They're, it'll knock them down because they feel so bad, right? It can. And I think it's, it's really important to, to manage, you know, make sure that patients know that. But in the face of, um, of a, a really bad cold and flu season, whether it's Corona. I mean, I heard, I read a statistic that said so far, um, there's been 16,000 severe cases of our regular flu. And yeah. so it's not like it, you know, it's not been, a, it's been a tough cold and flu season to begin with, but LL37 is, is kind of a ace, ace to keep in the hole, um, that you could carefully use to really kill it off. 
Uh, I'm going to offer another thing that's pretty out there that works crazily well. So ozone therapy, if, if I had coronavirus or anything like this, my first thing to do would be get me ozone therapy, whether it's intravenous or just rectal um, or in the ears. And it really makes a difference for any infection, whether it's viral, fungal, it doesn't matter. It, it's it's like, for me, a first line uh, yes, thing. Yeah, that's excellent. I, I forgot about ozone, but you're right. Ozone is amazing. I mean, I've had people on who cured Ebola with ozone. Uh, Dr. Robert Rowan did that <laughs> and you know, tells the story of it. <laughs> like, okay, that's pretty solid. Uh, the only problem is traveling with an ozone generator and a tank of oxygen is not really that easy to do. No. <laughs> uh, and, and if you're in a part of the world where all of a sudden they're restricting travel, you're probably not going to be able to go pick up a bottle of welding ozone anyway. So what do you do in that case? Uh, you can get ozone olive oil or ozone other oil suppositories and yeah put one of those in and it can be a little spicy going in it is ozone after all <laughs> but it will have a very similar effect to rectal ozone uh, so if i was traveling in the middle of a season like that i'd have a few of those in my bag and if i felt like i was starting to get sick i would absolutely uh, use that as uh well as, as close as you can get to uh, ozone therapy without ozone therapy uh, and of course, high levels of glutathione, all the other things like that. Mm -hmm. um, does that sound like might be useful? Oh, absolutely. Right. I think that sounds like a, a really good travel bag. We should put it together and tell people. Yeah, there, how to there get you it. go. Other one, you're a doctor. I want your take on this Cortef, bioidentical cortisol. You can take low doses of it. Um, it is a great way for me. I, I will take that if I start getting sick and I don't get sick most of the time. Mm -hmm. Good thing to carry, bad thing to carry. I think that if you're going to carry it and use it as a last resort, then then maybe. But I think doing the other things first would probably be a better thing to do. Um, there's definitely a place for it. And I think following what's happening with your cortisol system and knowing where you are baseline before you encounter sickness is probably a good thing to know as well. Okay, so know how you're doing. And yeah. final thing, I might have a little uh, box of azithromycin uh in my travel kit. I don't like antibiotics. I do not think it's a great idea to take them. However, if I was traveling somewhere and I started to get really bad respiratory symptoms and I thought it might be turning into pneumonia, I'd probably want to hit that sooner rather than later. Good idea? Yes. If you're traveling, especially if you're traveling someplace where you're not, you're not guaranteed to be able to get decent medical care, um, you should take everything you could possibly need with you. Um, you okay. know, the pneumonia can set in, um, under, you don't want to be out in the middle of some place where you can't get treated if you need to be treated. Yeah. I was just in Oman and Dubai and Abu Dhabi uh, last week, and I might have had all these things in my travel kit, <laughs> uh, with the exception of injectable thymosin, because um, I was out, but I did have uh, BPC <laughs> with me. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it it's one of those things where like you want to live a long time, you want to feel good, you should be able to manage yourself. And in case it turns us all into zombies, I brought my chainsaw too. Because you, know, <laughs> you gotta. <have> one. Right. <laughs> now, uh, on that note, thank you for our little mini episode on thinking about more resilience in the face of coronavirus without actually diagnosing, treating, or curing it. Because, well, that's not what we're talking about. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. 